once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a village near the forest. Whenever she went out, the little girl wore a red riding cloak. So everyone in the village called call her Little Red Riding Hood. One morning, the little red riding hood asked her mother if she could go to visit her mother as it had been a while since they since they'd seen each other. That's a good idea, her mother said. So they packed a nice basket for Little Red Riding Hood to take to her grandmother. When the basket was ready, the little girl put on her red cloak and kissed her mother goodbye. Remember, go straight to grandma's house, her mother cautioned. Don't doubt along the way and please don't talk to strangers. The woods are dangerous. Don't worry, mommy, said little right. Red Riding Hood. I'll be careful. But when Little Red Riding Hood noticed some lovely flowers in the woods, she forgot her promise to her mother. She picked a few, which the butterfly flew about for a while, listened to the frogs croaking, and then picked a few more. Little Red Riding Hood was enjoying the warm summer day so much that she didn't notice a dark shadow opening approaching or of out of the forest behind her. Suddenly, the wolf appeared beside her. What are you doing out here, little girl? The wolf asked in a voice as friendly as he could master. I'm on my way to see my grandma who lives through the forest, near the brook, the little red riding hood replied. Then she realized how late she was quickly excused herself, rushing down the path to her grandma's house. The wolf, in the meantime, took a shortcut. The wolf, a little out of breath from running, arrived at Grandma's and knocked lightly at the door. Oh, thank goodness, dear. Come in, come in. I was very sick that something had happened to you in the forest, said Grandma, thinking that the knock was her granddaughter. The wolf let himself in. Poor Granny did not have time to say another word before the wolf gobbled her. The wolf let out a satisfied burp and then poked through Granny's wardrobe to find night gown and he, that he liked. He had a frilly, sleepy cat, and for good measure, dabbed some Granny's perfume behind his pointy ears. A few minutes later, Red Riding Hood knocked the door. The wolf jumped into the bed and put cover over his nose. Who is it? He called in a cackly voice. It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, how lovely. Do come in, my dear, croaked the wolf. When Little Red Riding Hood entered the little cottage, she could scarcely recognize her grandmother. Grandmother, your voice sounds so odd. Is something matter? She asked. Oh, I just have a touch of a cold. She kissed the wolf, adding a cross at the end to prove the point. Grandmother, what big ears you have, said Little Riding Hood as she adds closer to the bed. The better to hear you, my dear, replied the wolf. But Grandmother, what big, what big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to see you with my it, my dear, replied the wolf. But Grandmother, what big teeth do you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. Her voice is quivering slightly. The better to eat you with, my dear, roared the wolf, and he leaped out of the bed and began to chase the little girl. Almost too late, Little Red Riding Hood realized that the person in the bed was not her grandmother, but a hungry wolf. She ran across the room and through the door, shouting, Help! Wolf! as loud as she could. A woodsman who was chopping logs nearby heard her cry and ran towards the cottage as fast as he could. He gripped the wolf and had him spit out the poor grandmother who was a bit frazzled by the whole experience, but still in one piece. Oh, grandma, I was so scared, so little red riding hood. I'll never speak to stranger or dog in the forest again. There, there, child, you've learned an important lesson. Thank goodness you showed out good enough in this kind woodsman to hear you. The woodsman knocked out the wolf, carried him deep into the forest where he wouldn't bother people any longer. Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother had a nice line and a long chat. 